Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, anyone that knows me even in passing knows full well that I'm not an economist. Uh, I'm a biologist, and, and when we were asked to do this project, the first thing I had to do was go out and find an environmental economist who uh, did all of this work and also wrote this talk. Unfortunately, she's in Australia, so that's why you got me. Um, I would definitely like to acknowledge Andrea Haas. Um, this, this work is hers. I will do my best to give the biologist version of an economic study. So I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that sharks are uh, in decline uh, globally. Not all, but, but a lot of species. Um, something about like 24% are listed as uh, threatened, endangered, or critically endangered. Um, that's quite a lot for a single group of species. Mostly driven by demand for fins uh, in the Asian market. And it's led to sharks really being harvested at a... Uh, at a um, industrial scale, when you're moving anything around with a dump truck, that's that's a pretty significant uh, significant fishery, especially when you're talking about an animal that has very f uh, slow reproductive rates and and cannot cope with that sort of pressure. So as a result, there's been a whole pile of different regional and national kind of measures to try and arrest these declines, both species-specific measures, um, as well as, uh, uh, as some arguably less effective regional measures. Um, and more recently, uh, the surge in sort of large-scale marine protected areas, of which Bahamas in 2011 obviously signed on to become a shark sanctuary. Um, all of these things are great, and they all have their place in the conservationist toolbox, but um, one of the, the things that is really overlooked is how um, and, and is actually pr very important, is, is applying or, or advocating the idea that these animals have a non-consumptive value. If someone's making a living for these animals in a way that means they're not getting killed and their fins cut off, um, then there's gonna, it's not just the conservationists, it's not just the scientists that are making the argument. So, as it relates to the Bahamas, as I already mentioned, 2011, um, Bahamas became a shark sanctuary, and that you know, was an important step. I think the more important step was actually made in the early 90s when longline fishing was banned, and we've essentially had shark sanctuary conditions in the Bahamas for the last, well, nearly 30-odd uh, years. Um, the 2011 sanctuary really just capitalized on that. As a result, we have some of the most uh, abundant populations of sharks anywhere in the world. Um, and with that abundance comes a very buoyant shark tourism industry. The Bahamas as a whole has, I believe, about 1.3 million tourists visit annually. Um, about 44%, I think, is the latest estimate for GDP. Uh, and 52% of the whole uh, population is employed directly or indirectly in tourism. The dive industry is obviously huge as well, um, and and what we're seeing now is also this in the last few years this evolution of this bespoke di shark diving industry, whereby the Bahamas is one of the last places in the world where you can come and see and interact with a lot of different species like the great hammerhead, the oceanic white tip, uh, and the tiger shark, and it's created this this pretty incredible uh, and vibrant industry which is responsible for a lot of economic growth. This is a, a great shot of Tiger Beach. This is one of the better known sites at the West End of Grand Bahama. Um, this is normal to be swimming around with, with four or five large tiger sharks. A more recent development is in Bimini. Um, this is the Great Hammerhead. And, and again, this is one of the only places in the world where you can reliably get in the water and swim around with these animals. Um, on top of that, we have more of our industrial type shark diving, the, the, the larger shore-based operations like Stewart's Coves, UNESCO, things like that, which move an incredible number of people through their reef shark dives on an annual basis. So in 2006, there was an assessment done of the shark diving industry, and it estimated it to be about uh, 80 million. Um, it was, it was um, commissioned by the, 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 shark, the dive industry. Um, and it, that figure was pretty pivotal in getting the, the shark sanctuary uh, approved in 2011.
However, um, Pew decided that it was probably time for a reassessment actually to, to get to some more real world figures. Um, and, and that's what we were asked to do. We um, focused on, on the two main participants, we, the operators and obviously the participants. Um, we quantified both direct expenditure, so how much do they pay to go for a dive, but also indirect expenditure, hotels, flights, car bookings, things like that. Um, we also looked at a bunch of qualitative data, like why did they come and visit? Was the shark sanctuary important? Was, uh, you know, was there a particular demographic of people? Where were these people coming from? Um, and another key part of this was willingness to pay to support conservation, i.e. this idea of all these shark divers coming to the Bahamas, um, they're diving with these incredible animals. What would their willingness to be paid? What premium would they put on, uh, uh, what tax could they pay that could feed back into conservation and science? Um, when we talked to the operators, we, we, again, uh, we, we asked some, some, some quantitative stuff, but we also were interested in how many people were employed in this industry, what species they operated, what species and operate, sorry, what species and locations they operated in. Um, what, th th this, this, there's one thing I got to step back. Uh, uh, again, this is the biologist talking. This idea of direct and indirect expenditures. The direct expenditure is what we actually measured the indirect is, is conducted by a, a standardized mul uh, economic multiplier of every dollar of direct expenditure put out. I didn't understand that before I had to stand up and give this talk. So, so that's how this sort of stuff's worked out and that's done independently by, by uh, economists, I guess. <laughs> So we, uh, we did both paper surveys with operators and also an online survey. We had uh, uh, close to 700 responses, um, of which 450 to 500 were, were considered usable after we got rid of the, the, the weird answers and, and the incomplete surveys. Um, our, our power analysis to try and figure out how many surveys we needed to, to, to have a representative sample was, came out to about 350, so we're pretty confident in the data we got. Um, when we're talking to the operators, um, we managed to interview about 64% of operators. When I say operators, we're talking both uh, Bahamian-based and foreign-based operators here. There's a lot of guys that come over from, from the US. Uh, and also from the Turks and Caicos, like we found out. So just talking about shark diving, and there's, there's other aspects to this which we'll get to in a minute. Um, the, the cumulative total uh, of ch diver days, which is what we, we, we broke the, the unit down into, how many divers doing, how many days of diving, um, was close to six, uh, excuse me, 63,000. Um, that translates into uh, just over 100 million, 109.3 million annually um, of uh, both direct and indirect expenditure within the Bahamian economy. Um, this is a pretty big increase since the 2006 estimate, which is not really surprising. When we break that down, uh, there's 48.8 million in direct expenditure right here in the Bahamas, and then that, that indirect and uh, incidental impact that I spoke about earlier uh, is another 60.5. It's interesting to point out here as well that, a, that this is just in the Bahamas. If we're talking direct expenditures on a global scale, both Europe, the States, all, the, all these different places where, where, um, where, where these divers are coming from, um, that's actually a 68 million in direct expenditure, so in terms of airfares and, and all of these things. So pretty, pretty significant figures. Just talking about the Bahamas now and just talking about the direct expenditure, not the, the indirect stuff, um, the vast bulk of this money is, comes through from, from this you know, highly, I want to say automated, but it's not, um, uh, highly organized sort of reef shark experiences through Stewart's. Cove and, uh, and UNESCO and, and other smaller operations around, around the Bahamas. Um, what's interesting here, that as in talking about conflict early in the lobster fishery, there's a lot of conflict between um, foreign-owned liverboard vessels and, and Bahamian vessels uh, who come, a lot of uh, foreign vessels come over and utilize this resource. Only 6% of, of the direct expenditure in the Bahamas uh, came from uh, foreign vessels. Um, and that really adds weight to the argument that these vessels are not really contributing a hell of a lot to the Bahamian economy. In addition to the, the diving industry, we also looked at film and t television, uh, research, and uh, stingrays, amazingly, are a huge amount of uh, revenue uh, in this arena. Um, 
I didn't know Atlantis had cow nose rays until we did this project. And nearly a million bucks worth of revenue is estimated to come from those which are not an endemic species to the Bahamas. Um, we had a long discussion about whether we should be including that 660,000 in the estimate or not. We still haven't figured it out. So when we factor all this in, diving, research, film and TV, um, we're about 112.8 million annually, which is not an insignificant amount of money contributed to the Bahamian economy. And it really highlights the importance of both the 1993 ban and the 2011 uh, sanctuary in protecting this really valuable asset. So some of the qualitative stuff, this is actually really quite interesting. I, I, I say that not without um, weight because I don't usually deal with qualitative stuff in my line of science. Um, the influence of the shark sanctuary and people's decisions to come here, 34% um, had, no, had no influence and another 34% had a great influence. And this seems quite anomalous, but I think what we're actually seeing here is a lot of people come here to dive with sharks, not because it's a shark sanctuary. And that 34% we see there is actually an effect of the long line ban and the great shark populations we have here versus the, uh, versus, uh, the, the more recent shark sanctuary. Um, what's really cool is that if you look at the, the second graph there, is that 44% or, or more than that, if you've taken the very important thought of the visitors, said it would influence their future decisions to, build, to visit. So the fact that we're attracting people that love sharks and then they realize we're actually protecting them um, is, is certainly swaying in, in the bah Bahamas' favor for repeat visits. So the vast bulk of, of people diving in the Bahamas come because they're interested in sharks. Uh, this is polled across all kind of dive operators, whether they're shark specialists or not. So you know, 77% of divers that visit the Bahamas want to see sharks. That's whether they're swimming around just on a dive and happen across one, or whether they're actually spending five days in the water with, with great hammerheads and bimini. Um, about 50%, just shy of 50%, interestingly, were, were um, it was the major reason why they were here. Um, again, uh, the, sorry, the second graph there, um, there's a lot of controversy about feeding sharks. Um, there's not really any scientific literature to support the idea that shark feeding uh, increases shark attacks or, or anything else like that. Indeed, uh, some of the operations here have been operating for 35 years with very few instances. Um, this, uh, yeah, what, it, what, what this graph essentially shows is that people that don't like it really don't like it, but everyone else doesn't really mind too much. So what, one of the broader implications here, this, this, uh, this, this, this image comes from a study we did a few years ago now on the oceanic white tips down in Cat Island. Um, the, the, the economic productivity of the south of Cat Island is pretty low. There's not a lot going on down there. Um, and, and then in the last five years, this, this, this industry's built up around this, these sharks. The, the, the oceanic white tip was once the most abundant, one of the most abundant vertebrates in the planet. Um, and now the last place in the world where you can reliably encounter them is off Columbus Point in Cat Island. And that draws a very special type of diver that comes down to dive just with these animals for a week or more. Um, both shore-based operations and, and liverboards coming all the way from the States. Um, the relative economic impact in Cat Island of these sharks is much, much higher, I would argue, than the relative economic impact of, of say, uh, the, the, the reef shark operations in Nassau. Um, it can't be underestimated that the value in, the, in these areas. What this image is showing is these tracking data from our, our satellite tracking study. Um, this resource uses the whole of the North Atlantic as its backyard. Uh, same with the turtles. And, and, and really, if we're talking about trying to conserve this animal from a biological perspective and also in an economic perspective for, for Cat Island and the Bahamas, then, then uh, we've got to do a lot more work on, 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 uh, throughout the Atlantic to, to get some more protection in place. Okay, so the willingness for these divers to support conservation. I, I know that the BNT has started a, a, a dive tag initiative, a voluntary one. Places like Bonaire have a compulsory tax that they charge every diver that comes in. Um, and, and what this is showing is that about 85% of divers support fees of $6 or higher per, per visit. Um, this money that is raised in Bonaire is fed directly back into the management of parks, into science, and into education and outreach initiatives. And I think uh, the results of this study indicate that that could be a very 
um, successful successful initiative here. So I'll wrap it up very quickly. Uh, sharks, huge economic value, um, and and the relative importance of them in places like Bimini or in in uh, in, in uh, Cat Island is is, is is they they cannot be underestimated down there. Um, and the the future for uh, for uh, raising conservation funds from these divers and visitors is, is actually, there's a lot of potential there. Um, thank you. That's all I've got, and I will take any questions very quickly. <laughs>